So my topics today is uh, if dropping on cell communication while extracellular vesicles to diagnose and treat cancer effectively. Sounds like a very fancy title, but just like mm, the main main point and main item here is extracellular vesicles. Okay, so what is extracellular vesicles? So this is a, a group of vesicles secreted by in general all type of cells that can be found in our body, they secrete vesicles, membrous vesicles. And these vesicles um, in general, they are membrane structures and containing RNA, DNA, proteins, and lipids, of course, that resembles the makeup of the original donor cell. So in, in these, are, uh, these vesicles will be updated by recipient cells. It can be nearby, it can be in distant, uh, in, in distant. So it's quite interesting. Initially, uh, scientists found these vesicles might be a way of the cell just to wrap up something inside the cell and try to throw it out from the cell. But lately, more and more evidence and many, many studies have proved that these vesicles play a very, um, play a very important role for the for the communication between cells. So I think now scientists are very interested by, by analyzing these vesicles that have been used for cells to communicate themselves, try to look into what are they inside, inside the vesicles and what are their functions. So uh, here I would like to clarify some things that uh, now today, many researchers are studying ex, um, extracellular vesicles, but initially, most are interested on uh, exosome. So to clarify, in fact, for those vesicles secreted by the cell, they are quite heterogeneous. So if we really want to look into and go depth into the study, we need to, we need to differentiate different type of uh, small uh, nano vesicles. So some of them, they directly bud up from the cell. So these are more uh, bigger size of the vesicles. They are micro vesicles uh, between 100 to 1000 nanometers. But um, they are also, um, in fact, most well-known extracellular vesicles are in fact exosome, which belong to a smaller, so a smaller group of them. And they actually biogenesize up their biogenesis is different from the, the larger size of vesicles. They normally go through a pathway known as uh, endocytic pathway that they, they, they might involve some um, um, infold of the membranes and then those endosomes form inside the cell will start uptake of material and form further smaller vesicles inside these vesicles. And, and this is known as multi-vesicular body. And then the, the, those materials from the cell will start packed into these vesicles. And later on, they fuse with a plasma membrane and release this very small vesicles. So these specific group of vesicles is known as exosome. And this is more, um, initially people uh, try to uh, analyze this, but later on we realize that this group of vesicles are really heterogeneous and can be found in our body. All right, so I think uh, my interest is, of course, on those vesicles secreted by cancer cells. And inside our body, we have a lot of cells. And also, we found that, lately scientists found that um, cancer cells, compared to normal cells, they secrete more of extracellular vesicles, and especially exosome. And so all these vesicles secrete out from the cell, they will be end up in the, they end up will be in uh, circulating throughout the body uh, in all type of biofluid. So you can imagine uh, when this, this vesicle secrete out from the cell and then they release into the circulating system in our blood, you can find in saliva, in blood and in urine. So in all these biofluid, you can find uh, vesicles, extracellular vesicles, out from the cell. So if there's uh, this, let's say, this is a cancer in the body, those vesicles originated from the cancer can be found in all this biofluid as well. All right. So um, 
in the first slide, I already mentioned these vesicles contain material, contain the molecule came from the donor cell. That means inside the vesicles that uh, are, are released by cancer cell, they should contain some molecules that specific and unique to the cancers. And if they play a role in cell communication means they might play a role in promoting cancer development. And so in general now, uh, we believe these vesicles carry cancer markers. All right, so if we promote cancer development, I think this is one of the hypotheses that many scientists now try to prove that uh, there are many, many evidence already shown. Exosome, one of the function that release from cancers is to shape the tumor microenvironment that favorable to the development of the cancers. So one of the function would be, we've already known on the vesicles, they con um, there are M MMP, a, a group of enzyme that can degrade, that can degrade the, the group of enzyme that can degrade the extracellular matrix. And this is one of the mechanism that enable the cancer cell can move around and enable their migration to elsewhere. But another function of this group of vesicles is they can be updated by the immune cells that the immune cells are supposed to identify cancers, a cancer cell and kill them. But this exosome might actually have been proved and to a certain extent, they can update by the immune cells, and then <clears throat> they might not be able to identify the cancer cells, or they themselves will go through the apoptosis, lead to the decrease of population of the immune cells. So I think well, other function that have been found about the uh, cancer-derived exosome is they might travel, they might be released to to into the blood vessels, circulating system. And then they start to travel to elsewhere to start their journey to find a new, uh, new site for uh, starting another colonies of cancer. All right. So uh, my in research interest, the first one, is actually uh, uh, inspired by my PhD project that I found that the drug that I study, and end up to colocalize with exosome that found inside the cancer cell. So that is quite interesting. By that time, the study on uh, exosome or uh, EV is not that popular. That I found maybe there's something there. One of, the, one of my hypotheses is maybe some cancer cells are very resistant to the drug treatment because they're able to encapsulate the, the, the drug that used to treat them and isolate them from the cytoplasm and then throw them out from the cell. So the, the best vehicles that can play this role would be this EV or exosome. So um, to test this hypothesis, in one of my research, I use oral squamous cell carcinoma as a model and use them to be treated by cis, uh, cisplatin. So in fact, I have a large panel of cell, different cell line. I saw um, uh, generate from different patients. And then um, I treat them using the cisplatin and shows that they have various response in the cisplatin treatment. And I, I choose, uh, I select those we very, very resistant to the cisplatin. And then I also choose another cell line, which is very sensitive to cisplatin treatment. So from these two cell line, uh, from the sensitive one, uh, I expose them with cisplatin, prolong the treatment, and also the, this is to, to develop the, the resistant cell from the sensitive cell. So in total, I examine uh, three cell lines here. One is very sensitive, the other two are resistant. One is naturally being resistant, one is adaptive resistant. All right, so I collect exosome from them and then try to analyze. Okay, so back to my hypothesis is if resistant cell can cancel and expel drugs means this two line of resistant cell that you should we should find more cisplatin inside the EV if I treat them using a cisplatin. Right, so the result proved my hypothesis that uh, these two cell line, adaptive resistant has 314. And uh, adaptive resistance is H103, 2 and the 
de novo resistance is H103. Inside the vesicles, we find higher amount of cisplatin when they treated with cisplatin. And of course, um, quite tally with this observation, these two cell lines, they, they won't die uh, as severe as H103. All right, so uh, to know the mechanism, we try to find out what have been done in others group. And some other uh, study have shown that it could possibly that um, the efflux transporters, they, um, they, they involve in the uh, endocytic pathway as well. They involve with uh, uh, forming of the vesicles. So these, these molecules, and sometimes if they are increased in cancer cell, they might involve to transport the cisplatin inside the vesicles, either with or without formation of the multivesicular body. They can isolate the, the drug from the cytoplasm and wrap them inside the vesicles and, and go through the exocytosis pathway to release the drug, expel them out of the cell. Uh, and maybe they wrap it inside the exosome and expel them out. So this is quite interesting to know uh, that our study actually proved this part of the observation. And next we ask, um, if this is a case, what if we inhibit the exosome secretion? So we, we test this hypothesis, like we inhibit the exosome secretion by using the proton pump inhibitor. And this proton pump inhibitor we use successfully inhibit the secretion, the amount of the EV. And what happened is, next we want to, we want to know whether or not by inhibiting the exosome secretion that contains cisplatin, we will retain more cisplatin in the cell and whether or not it might actually decrease the survival of the resistant cell. So resistant cell will become more sensitive to the cisplatin treatment. All right, so by testing uh, this hypothesis, what we observe is those cells that are originally already resistant to cisplatin, their survival decreased significantly, but not that, in, uh, not that impressive, that um, they become more sensitive to cisplatin treatment. But this doesn't happen, didn't happen in those cells that with adaptive resistance. So of course, um, maybe the inhibitor that they use might not work in this cell line. So later on, we searched for quite a lot of information and found that in fact, now today, to inhibit the vesicle, uh, the extracellular vesicles as uh, one of the potential approach to enhance chemo resistance is a trend already. So many inhibitors have been, um, many chemicals or many reagents have been developed to inhibit the biogenesis of the exosome uh, at a different stage of the pathway. And I think I want to emphasize here is one of the experiment using this um, calcium channel inhibitor uh, in combined with the chemotherapy drugs, they successfully shown that this inhibition of the release of the exosome can reduce the tumor size in mouse model. So I think this, uh, at this part, um, we just know that if we continue, we continue this research, you might need to use a different type of inhibitors. And um, okay, so that is uh, the, some report or just sharing for my first uh, hypothesis, research hypothesis. Okay, next is we, if, if inhibition of EV actually can enhance the, the killing effect of the drugs or in another way is might this vesicle might contain some molecule that promoting tumor uh, tumor growth and also affecting neighboring cell may turn them into the cancers then um, then first of all we need to prove that this exosome or, or the extracellular vesicles will be uptake by neighboring cell or the, the cell beside the cell that release the, the vesicles so um, this is just to, to show that uh, I, by using confocal microscopes, a microscope, we stain the cell, the recipient cell, uh, by using nucleus, the blue color here is shown the nucleus, and the, the, the red dot here are those uh, late endosome. Lamp, I, I stain them using lamp B2, conjugate with red fluorescence, and the EV is the in green fluorescence, is the one that we use them to 
uh, incubate the cell. So the EV that stain with the green fluorescence updated by the cell. And of course, it's not quite clear here. Let's enlarge this more reagent. We can see the green fluorescence um, co-localize. Co-localize with the red fluorescence means, and yes, EV will be um, did update by the recipient cell. And also they um, join, they are co-localized with a late endosome. So this is one of the starting point that uh, we tried to examine another hypothesis, which are whether or not EVs can transfer message to recipient cells for cancer survivor. Right, so in the previous study, we focused on oral cancer cell model. And at the same time, we have another model they're focusing on. We use colon cancer cells. So from these two cell lines that we culture, especially those uh, the, for oral cancer cell, we obtain those exosomes from the resistant cell. We try to uh, incubate them with uh, another cell line. And obtained by resistant cell, we check whether or not these uptake of exosome will increase their survival. And yes, we observe especially quite uh, impressive is for the colon cancer cell that we, we try, to, uh, try to study whether or not one of the oncogenic gene, which is Keras, um, they, whether or not this Keras play a role in regulating the, the exosome secretion from the colon cancer cell, that we found that um, uh, we found that this EV secreted from the cancer cell, they will promote survival of the neighboring cell that uptake from the colon cancer cells when the, the original cell facing stress due to uh, some regulation on the oncogenic pathway. So this is quite interesting. This leads us to analyze the protein composition of those EV or exosome secreted from the cancer cell. So what we found here is uh, from the proteomic study, we found that um, basically those EV or exosomes secreted from different cell line are different. And further, in response to different treatment, the composition of the EV also might it will be very different. So what impressive is, uh, what um, some finding from these two proteomic studies is, from the colon cancer cells, we treat, we treat those cells using the inhibitor of Keras. And we found that stress induced after treat, treatment of the Keras in, uh, inhibitors. And we found that in those cells that bring stress, they secrete more EV. And further, we found there are some uh, increased some of the protein that already known to play a role in promoting cancer survival. So that means that the cancer cell, when they have been treated with some inhibitors, they have stress induced, they secrete more EV, and they pack those message inside those EV, and being the wish, of course, being updated by another cancer cell, that, that that will be a message sending out to increase survival of their neighboring cell. So in terms of oral cancer cell, because the purpose is to study the drug resistance, we found that one of the protein that highly increase inside the EV secreted by the resistant cell is TG2. That is also known that it can promote drug resistance. So it's quite interesting from this both study, we might observe EV contain messengers for cancer survivor. So now there are some study ongoing in my lab to further uh, uh, testify whether or not these are the potential marker for cancer detection or for monitoring therapeutic effects. All right. So uh, from the result just now, I guess shows that all these uh, vesicles that secrete out from the cell, especially cancer cell, they are so heterogeneous. And, but of course, more and more study now try to scrutinize the difference between them. Of course, it's quite confirmed that different cancer cells, uh, cancer cells with different oncogenic mutation, they secrete different uh, population of the vesicles. 
and among the population of vesicles secreted out of the same cancer cell, they might also have different composition of the membrane proteins, different composition of RNA, or different composition of intracellular proteins. So now many, many studies are ongoing to clarify their correlation with their, whether or not you will direct these certain vesicles to, to the different site and in favor for those sites being start prepare the suitable environment to initiate the, the colonies of the cancers. In, in, uh, in terms of cancer means this is the one of the deliver, uh, deliver agent that to find a place that's suitable for metastasis of cancer. All right, so this lead to my third uh, research interest is that we want to find out whether or not EV contain unique molecular profile for cancer detection. So now already a lot of evidence shows that cancer cell secrete, um, secrete exosome or extracellular vesicle, vesicles that contain the molecule that can, can track back whether or not they are resources, they are originated from the cancer. And different cancer have different oncogenic makeup and those, those different can be indicated in the exosome that's circulating inside the body. And this exosome can be found in different types of biomolecule, uh, uh, biofluid. So these are the very interesting uh, vesicles that can be obtained uh, from, uh, from the, the blood or saliva or urine. So um, to, to test this hypothesis, whether or not we can just use the vesicles, isolate from the biofluid to detect cancers, I choose prostate cancer as a model. So what is prostate cancer? It's a cancer that occurs in the prostate. And this is the second most common cancer in men worldwide. And also, <clears throat> it's the most common cancer among Malaysian male population. So choosing this model, we of course try to find out what is the significant to find an alternative way for cancer detection for prostate cancer. So of course we know that in a general uh, <clears throat> test uh, for men, one of the common tests that usually will, uh, usually will, how to say, usually include in the health uh, program is PSA test. So this is a, the test that's a test of prostate specific antigen that there's a range if you have the men have been tested, the range is outside of 4.0 nanogram per ml. So that means it's in a dangerous range that you might have a chance to get the prostate cancers. But even though it's a quite very, very commonly used, but uh, more and more study found uh, this is not actually specific and sensitive, especially in the range between four to 10 or 20 nanogram per, per mil. And so that's why for those group that having the range between four to 10 or 20 nanogram per mil, they are not quite, uh, the doctor actually can't decide whether they have prostate cancer or not. So most likely those group have to go through the biopsy. So they have to take out the tissues and then to, to, test, to, to examine the, the real marker to classify or to clarify whether they have prostate cancer or not. And this procedure normally is very invasive, unfavorable because it's painful and risky. So uh, now today, doctors or medical scientists, they are interested to find a more favorable way is by using liquid biopsies to because this is non-invasive and effective detection of disease markers. But also is that it's a drawback for most of the method now because this is quite diverse. The, molecule, uh, the material you can find in the urine or blood, too many material, even though there might be a cancer markers, but it is too diluted to be detected. So in our study, we are interested in, we hypothesize that extracellular vesicles might be those molecules that found in the vesicles might be more concentrated compared to those circulating or floating around in the urine or blood. So the, my, our next 
uh, report I want to share with you is we isolate the extracellular vesicles from urine that collected from the prostate cancer patient. So it, what we want to find out is whether or not that this approach can differentiate between those individuals with and without prostate cancers. So to, uh, to share with you is our pilot study in the wolf sample size is not big, 53. And we, we isolate, uh, we collect urine from the, the individual that involved in the, the project and isolate the urine, the EV from the urine, and then uh, analyze them using FTIR. FTIR here means is to, to get the infrared spectrum uh, from the vesicles. So what our hypothesis is, um, the cancers derived vesicles that circulate in the urine, they, they have a different set of biomolecule and they are different set of chemicals, mean they will give rise to the different infrared spectrum that reflect that different, uh, different chemical compositions. All right, so of course, IR is IR spectrum means this is a lot of wave numbers to be to be analyzed, large data set. That's why we need to use the statistic analysis to uh, to analyze the data. And what uh, we will be use we use in our study is a principal component analysis. So we will classify. So all the data collected will be analyzed and cluster using the the PCA. And each dot, and for each cluster that have been formed, one average will be obtained. And it, each dot will be <clears throat> measured. Their distance with the central average dot will be measured with the central of each cluster. So the minimum uh, distance will be taken and considered and classify particular dot into that cluster. All right, so this is a general method that we use to, to, to analyze the, the data collected from FTIR analysis. So from um, in the first stage, we just want to differentiate between the individual with and without cancer. All right, so for all the individuals that suspected to have prostate cancer but not confirmed yet will be included in this program, and then they will be collected for their tissue for the uh, the trust guided prostate biopsies, but at the same time, their blood samples will be collected to, uh, to be <clears throat> tested using the PSA test. And at the same time, from this whole group, their urine samples will be collected for FTIR analysis to isolate the EV and for FTIR analysis. And so the result is uh, uh, for, from, from the EV that collected from the urine, uh, that is uh, as, as, as high as 81% that can differentiate and can identify certain samples as prostate cancer. Uh, of course, but the sensitivity, uh, sensitivity is lower a bit to identify some samples are not prostate cancers. The percentage is 59%. And um, next stage, we also try to focus on those uh, cancer patients only but they might have different stage of cancer, uh, prostate cancers. So the urine have been collected. Of course, we analyze the, the FTRR data and then to compare with the recent score that commonly used to different or classify the stage of the prostate cancer. So the result is the FTRR analysis of urinary EV that shows that uh, the, the highest uh, accuracy that for those this EV to identify those cancer stage, recent score equal to seven, but less satisfactory for those lower or higher than seven. Right, so, but what we want to focus here is if this method been used to compare with PSA, PSA tests, just to differentiate between non yeah, cancerous or non-cancerous. So when consider all the all the individual involved in the, uh, the analysis, um, the effectiveness uh, or the probability of this method to identify or to differentiate or discriminate between cancerous and non-cancerous cases are quite similar. But what I mentioned initially is for this prostate cancer, one of the gray area is for those individual 
tested with PSA range between 4 to 20 or 4 to 10. They are not. So from this study, we shown that there's only 43 or highest 44 percent of probability that they can discriminate between cancer and non-cancerous. But our method FDR analysis of the urinary EV actually stand the highest accuracy to discriminate between the cancerous and non-cancerous cases. So from this result, we propose this method might have the potential to serve as a hmm, effective test to confirm the PSA uh, uh, screening result. All right, so I think we just propose a potential working model is from the last cohort of patients that they go through this uh, biopsies, we can initially build out the data set as a reference. So this is a reference already a cluster. So whenever there's some patient come in later, the IR spectrum can be get from the, the analysis. And then um, once they have got the data and then the, they have been analyzed using PCA, they been, can be classified using the, the reference data set and then the cancer grade can be assigned. So we review and then we find out more and more study in a good agreement with our finding as well. FDIR can, can be a very, a very convenient method to be used for cancer screening or diagnostic tools. So what our prospect here is, uh, is, is really interesting to find out, what, find out more whether or not just by, uh, by getting those biofluids without having getting the tissue, this non-invasive method can be used if we can, we can isolate uh, the very, very small uh, vesicles, exosome from this biofluid, capture them using the, the biochip, and then analyze using FDIR. So easily we can use this method for screening, diagnosis, and monitoring of cancers. All right, so here just want to show you what is, uh, this, this is this is the nano site that show the Brownian movement of the extracellular vesicles uh, that obtained from my study. So in general, well, our observation here is cancer cells do secrete more EV for their survival and some molecule inside the EV can, might have potential to be used as, as chemoresistant marker. But most interesting, we found is EV inside the biofluids like blood, saliva, or urine. They contain unique molecular uh, profile for cancer detection. All right, so thank you for your attention. Uh, that's all for my talks.